I'm Erin Dooley. I'm a screenwriter, speaker, and long distance walker. I walked 85 miles on the Wicklow Way in Ireland, 96 miles on the West Highland Way in Scotland, but it all started with 500 miles across Spain on the Camino de Santiago to forgive and find healing. I documented my experience in a film and I give talks on forgiveness. And now I'm recreating this by inviting people to join me on Walks to Forgive. This week I'm in Southern California. I'll be talking with Belinda about how she forgave abuse. I left and I divorced my husband when Belinda was eight months old. We just packed up, got some trash bags and packed up one bag each and I was gone. At five, um, the visitations had just started. They were ordered visitations, I believe. Like My mom had to allow me to go. They were okay up until that day. I remember taking a walk with him and he had said we were supposed to go visit my grandma and there was like a small bed of flowers like a freeway bridge. We were walking and he wanted to stop by a liquor store. I remember wanting to pick a flower for my grandma and I remember picking the flowers and feeling really uncomfortable with the situation and I remember looking at the petals and I remember picking them and some reason crying before anything even happened and I asked to go home and he said no and he got aggressive and he started to touch me. Since Belinda's Catholic faith was so important to her while she was healing and forgiving, I thought the perfect walk would be to go on the California Mission Walk. And we're going to start here at the San Gabriel Mission. California's El Camino Real connects the 21 historic Spanish missions. The 800 miles could be walked on a continuous through hike over 54 days or it can be walked in segments over time. We're going to take a few days and join the California Mission Walkers group. We'll be going between San Gabriel and San Fernando. Even though this section of the walk is a bit more urban and takes us through neighborhoods on pavement, the walk will still give Belinda and I a perfect opportunity to talk further. I completely erased it from myself. Like, I don't remember anything that actually happened after it until I became a teenager. Somehow another memory came in of another incident with an armadillo. I don't know how old I was, but I do remember going into where my dad called it his workspace and it was dark. He told me to sit there because he had a surprise for me and he showed me this armadillo. It was a dead stuffed armadillo. I remember holding it and him sitting across from me with another brown bag. I remember getting that same gut feeling, that same just I want to get out of here, I want to go home. And he went and locked the door. I didn't know what to do first time I felt like it was my fault that he got in trouble and I didn't want to get him in trouble so this time I didn't see anything and this time sorry I've never said this part This time, he did touch me in places. And, um, they never said anything. Yeah, I just remember always holding that stupid armadillo while the whole thing happened. 
but she never said anything about being touched or being hurt. But I always felt something, something wasn't right. I got orders after that. I went to the court and I had all the police report, everything, and they stopped the visitations. And I somehow erased all my memory of what had happened to me little. And then I started blaming my mom for why I couldn't see my dad. I had no clue why I couldn't see him. And I remember bugging her all the time. She would keep on and on and on and want answers and questions. And she, she was angry, rebellious, and I knew inside she's missing something. There's something that she's not saying. So one day she was about 15, and she told me straight up, Mom, I want to go to San Francisco. I need some business with my father. And so I let her go. I said, you're old enough to go. You go get your answers with her sister, which was over 21. And my dad uh, kept on telling me that he had a gift for me. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll see you later. Like, no, I don't want your sister to see this gift because I didn't get one for her. And I believed it. So I went and followed him. Started opening up a box full of memories and pictures. He sat there next to me showing me all this stuff. I started getting that feeling again of this is not right, you gotta get out of here. But at the same time, I remember being like magnetized to the seat that I was sitting on. Like I couldn't get up and his hand started going to my thigh. I trying to hold my hand and then he while holding my hand, made his way. And I knew he was gonna do something again. And this time though, I was older and I got up. I remember going back inside the house where my sister was at and I told her that I am leaving right now. I packed my bags and I'll never forget as we were boarding the bus, my dad chasing us drunk and loud and I remember yelling back at him that I never wanted to see him again. I didn't see him for I want to say what six years. The day that uh, I was about to get married I asked him to walk me down the aisle. I was scared. I felt like something bad was gonna happen and she was gonna be let down. I went through his pockets where I was doing his laundry and I found a note that he had in there of what he was going to say to me and that's when everything flashed back to me. I asked him face to face in my own home what he was talking about in this note and we talked about it. And I remember breaking down and being very upset and telling him that I didn't want him to walk me down the aisle anymore. I decided that I was never going to forgive him for what he did. What things still happen in your life to um, like trigger any thing that you realize you still need healing from? Um, the smell of alcohol. Um, it's more like the cheap beer that uh, has a very strong odor to it and especially men who smell like that. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to go to gatherings, parties, flowers, you know, a certain look, a certain like, white flower. Well, actually, yeah, almost any flower. To this day, I will not hold hands with any man, even my own ex-husband. I would not, I would get scared of holding hands and I will try, but sometimes a certain squeeze of the hand, it scares me because I, I know what it was leading to. Trust. 
issue. Um, it was for both men and women, but mostly men, yeah. of course. And um, it has ruined a lot of relationships, friendships, family. Could not trust anybody. I could not trust my husband. Even when he was telling the truth, <laughs> I still insisted that he was lying. Um, family members, I ended a lot of relationships with cousins, male cousins. And they didn't do nothing wrong. Yeah. It was just, I felt like I was getting too close, mm. too comfortable. I would never like the kids being alone with their own dads. I know that sounds sad, but I wouldn't because they're just so small and they can't say anything or fight anyone off. And as much as I want my boys to have quality one-on-one -on -one time with their dads, because I didn't have my dad and I know how important it is to have that relationship, but at the same time, inside it's just eating me up. Like, you know, what if this happens or what if that happens? For the longest, my own reflection was a big issue because my mom and my dad have two very different looks from each other and it is very distinct that I look like my dad. I started to hate myself oh my for how I looked. I went as far as shaving my head, coloring it every color of the rainbow, very extreme makeup to try to look different. And then there were parts when I wanted to look like him mm. and I would make myself look like a guy. Mm. Sometimes I would talk to myself in the mirror because I thought I was talking to him mm. because I looked like him. Yeah. My hate can reflect on her. My not letting go can reflect on her. And um, thank God, at that time, I started going to church, and that's what helped me. And church, um, that was the only option that actually helped. Because <laughs> I tried doing all the others, but I just couldn't get it without Jesus. Right when I started the Catholic faith was when I had just confronted my father and so it was a lesson for both in how to forgive. When I got introduced to Mary is when I decided that I was going to stop coloring my hair. I wanted to reflect her, not only her inner beauty but her outer beauty to my sons. It wasn't about looking like my dad anymore. It was about looking like Mary because I wanted to show my boys a different type of love. And I felt like my inside love needed to be expressed on the outside. And I wanted to show my boys that it's okay to be my natural self. How much hatred people had for Jesus and yet he forgave them. I started to question that to myself. I hated my dad. And I hated men, and it almost made me hate Jesus. When people would tell me that Jesus is your father, and he loves you no matter what you do, and I was like, that's false. I had a dad, and look at what he did to me. But as I kept on hearing all these like stories of different people in the Bible, and, and different saints, and I just started thinking like, why can't I forgive him? I have done a lot of crap and how could Jesus forgive me? The teachings are to be more like Jesus and forgive those and that was the one sin that I could not let go of was the hatred that I had towards my dad. So I was getting my sacraments and I knew that if I really wanted to be cleansed and pure that I've got to let it go like I've got to forgive him and move on and so I made a trip to San Francisco and I told myself that I was going to sit down and talk to him and tell him everything that I remembered and I said if he says sorry if he could just say sorry to my face 
then I will forgive him. But if he denies it, then I was going to kill myself. I went over there. We went on a walk. I told myself I was not going to be in some room again with him. He took me to the, the library and he started picking these books out for me. I remember not wanting to embarrass him there at the library and say, no, I didn't want these books. So I took them. I had stored them and put them away and I never looked at them until one day I was cleaning out my books and I realized that they were all based on women that were broken. And now I feel like he was trying to tell me something, but he couldn't. He wrote me another letter that he never mailed out, but he handed it to me when I did get there. And it was apologizing. And it's like almost hard for me to believe. Um, and I think maybe because I still have anger. It's my own anger. I'm, I'm very happy because I want healing for Belinda. I pray, praying for years and years and years for healing for my daughter. That he promised that he was going to try to get some help. And if I could ever forgive him, and I did. I told him to his face, I do forgive him. I did tell him about how hard he made life for me. I told them of everything that I went through and he broke down. That was the last time I saw him in person. I had been praying for him, offering masses for him, for a miracle to happen. And then the last letter I received from him was saying that he was picked up by some nuns and they had taken him to a church and he was getting cleaned. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna make another trip out there. This time, maybe I'll be able to see my actual dad. Set for December, as I was decorating my son's birthday party, I got a phone call saying that my dad was dead. And I felt happy. I felt, thank you, Lord, for ending this story. I was angry and happy at the same time. Somehow I thought I had forgiven him on the last visit, but I realized when I heard that he was gone, I realized that I wasn't healed from it. Part of me was, it's over. I'll never have to experience it again or even come across that maybe it could happen again. And at the same time, I was angry because it felt like it wasn't finished. Like it wasn't fair that I never got to have the father that I wanted. I really thought that by forgiving him, I still had a lot more years to try to have a normal dad that my children could see and meet one day. And to find out that that's it, his story ended there and I was mad because I said well for him it was easy he was forgiven and in a short time his life turned around that's it like he gets to go this past Father's Day I had a peace on me like I was missing him even all the bad parts of him that I knew and remembered yet I missed it I wanted him here and that's why I asked my mom I could bring him here to my place because I know that we still had unfinished business. I wanted him here for those moments when I do have anger because of what my dad did that I could just yell at him because <laughs> he's right here now. I feel like even though I never had my dad, now I do. If you let hate take over you, you're always going to be alone and angry. I think I could be completely set free now because I can see my daughter free now. Because of God, I am able to forgive. I am trusting that God will also continue to help me heal because I want to be whole. 
I am astounded at Belinda's ability to forgive. With everything that she's been through, she still has empathy for other people. She picks herself up again, is always striving to be a better person, and just keeps moving forward. She truly exemplifies the spirit and motto of St. Junipero Serra, founder of the missions. Siempre adelante, always forward.